Hey boys and girls, I've been dragging my feet on this uh, Ulysses for Beginners series and I just decided that um, we need to get into the book. So this right here is going to be the final episode of Ulysses for Beginners. Before we get into the book, oh I tricked you, you thought this was going to be the end. It's not the end. We have tons more. Um, this is the last of the preamble videos in which I just randomly talk about whatever I think can prepare ye for your foray into Ulysses. So, let's begin. So, first, of all, I have gotten an enormous quantity of um, letters, emails, and phone calls, maybe a telegram, saying like, what is this issue, um, what happened in that, that last, one of those old videos that you did, you talked about World War II taking place in the 19-teens, that's wrong, it didn't happen. World War I, in fact, happened in the 19-teens. Adam Savage, you're a liar. And um, I just want you to know that um, that wasn't necessarily an error on my part. I'm going to read you a quote by a guy named James Joyce. Here it is. A man of genius makes no mistakes. His errors are volitional and are the portals of discovery. That's the quote. Now, I'm going to save you a trip to uh, your favorite dictionary website. Volitional means you do it on purpose. So, I did that on purpose, maybe, perhaps. And uh, it was a portal of discovery. So, you're welcome. Next order of business, let's talk about this book I read between the last video and this video called Stephen Hero. Some people pronounce it Stephen Hero. I'm going to pronounce it Stephen Hero. And um, Joyce wrote this before he wrote A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and after Dubliners. It was, or maybe simultaneously with Dubliners when he was in Trieste or something. He wrote this book as really long and autobiographical, kind of fictionalized, but he didn't like it. He was like, ah, this book sucks. I hate it. Or people won't publish this. And so he's like, I'm going to burn it. And he threw it in the fire. But his, uh, his girlfriend, later his wife, Nora Barnacle, she went to the fire and she said, no, don't burn it, I'm going to save it. And she saved some of it, but some of it burned, a lot of it burned. We have about a few hundred pages of it. I don't know why I'm holding, let me get the book. Here's the book, Stephen Hero, Stephen Hero um, James Joyce, some people say James Joyce. Uh, there's a lot of little writing on the book. I don't think he wrote this personally. I think they printed it. Uh, on the back, there's a description you can read if you have the book. And, um, I read that book. It's a enjoyable book. It's, it's pretty good. It's, I've mixed because it's, a lot of it's missing. <laughs> but, um, I would recommend reading it at least after your initial foray into Ulysses, if not before. I still stick with um, my earlier book recommendations, the five books, as saying that Dubliners and a Portrait are probably the most essential for reading Ulysses. So I just want to say that that was an enjoyable book. I am glad I read it. It does add more to Ulysses. And um, if you're a hardcore joy scene, you should probably read it yourself. Another book I read a long time ago is this famous biography of Joyce. There are others, but this is the longest, I believe, and the most famous. It's called James Joyce, and it's written by a guy named Richard Elman. Some say Elman, like, which means like the man. And um, it's a good book. I didn't enjoy it as much when I read it initially. I didn't know Joyce's stories or his story or him, or I've never met him personally, but... Um, I'm listening now to the audiobook. So first time I read it with my eyeballs, now I'm listening it with my earballs. And the audiobook I, I enjoy. It's um it's really long. It's like 30 something hours. So it's taken me a while. I'm only like nine hours in. Uh one day I'll finish it, I hope. And uh it's 
another book that I would add to the bookshelf of books that you might want to read to open up Ulysses. So this, the topic of this video that we're doing, that we're, we're you're not, you're not making it, that I'm making is called the schemas. And a schema is like a map. Think of it like a map. You know what a map is? It's like a map. So it allows you to see something that isn't there. And Joyce, when he was writing Ulysses chapter by chapter, publishing it in the Little Review, um, his friends would say, James, or they would call him Jimmy, or Jim, or Jamu, and they would say, Jimmy, they would say, uh, Mr. J, or J-A-J, -J, what is this book? What is it? I don't understand. And I thought you were my friend, and you write this really hard book. And he would be like, okay, I want to be your friend still, so I'm going to give you this schema to help guide you through the book. What is this schema about? Well, actually, there's a few. He did one for his amigo, Mr. Linati, or Linati, and his other friend, uh, Mr. Gilbert. And he said, um, understand this book. I think he, they came out around 1920, 1921, as the book was in progress. And each chapter, he tells you, how does this correspond to the Odyssey? How does this correspond to a, an organ of the body? How does this correspond to an art such as uh, rhetoric or um, dancing. I don't know if that's, I don't think dancing is one of them actually. I, I don't have the scheme in front, of, in front of me. But each of these chapters has all these things that he uh, subtly includes. And um, you don't need to look at it that much actually. The first reading, don't even worry about it because it's not essential. But as you learn the book more, yeah, you probably do want to check it out because it's interesting to see how he does include all these things, like the chapter on that has the uh, the digestive organ, I guess the stomach or maybe one of the intestines as the organ. That chapter has all these references to like digestion and things like that. Maybe it's Lestragonians. We'll see. Um, I'm going to look at that schema more as we progress. Anyways, they're out there, and that's the title of this video, so now you know. I'll link to them both. They're on Wikipedia, and uh, you can check them out. This idea, though, of using uh, the Odyssey and all these different categories to chop up your chapters and give you uh, uh, something to guide you, to, to motivate you, even though Joyce veers as far away from it as possible, it's something that I discuss, actually, in my book, Overcoming Writer's Block. Am I pointing to it? Is it there? You can, um, if you are a writer like James Joyce, maybe you want to check out this book and get it and support my channel and uh, you can do that. Uh, I talk about ways that you can um, come up with story ideas and stuff. So check it out, aspiring writers, and uh, you'll see, you'll understand why Joyce did this. Um, have I talked about Bloomsday at all? I don't know. It's when this book takes place. It's called Bloomsday, and it takes place on June 16th, 1904. I'm making this in the year 2019, which is later, and it's, uh, every year people gather in Ireland, in Dublin, and they say, Let's celebrate James Joyce and Ulysses and they do stuff like recreate scenes and they go to locations and they eat sandwiches just like the people in the book. So that's what Bloomsday is. So I think um, that about wraps it up. We're ready to start the book. Um, you can um, begin the first chapter which is called Telemachus. It's a short chapter. The first three chapters, it's called the Telemachiad because it it's about Telemachus, the son of Odysseus in the Odyssey. <clears throat> it's a lot more similar to a portrait of the artist as a young man than the later chapters when Joyce really starts to get wild and crazy. They're pretty accessible, the first two at least, and uh, you're welcome to read them before me or you can wait and join me in the adventure and uh, wait for my next video. I'll get to it at some point, obviously, unless I don't. But I will. So let's just take a, a second and have a moment of silence and consider the amazingness that we even have this book, that it was finished, all the difficulties that took place. One, 
it's a really hard book, so why would people bother with this hard book? They're like his friends. They're like, Joyce, I don't understand this. I don't want to read this. Goodbye. Um, they closed the book. Or um, also Joyce was having a lot of money issues. So we can thank his uh, financial helpers like Mrs. Harriet Shaw Weaver and uh, the people that helped him. It's pretty amazing, like uh, Ezra Pound and uh, a lot of women. Uh, what's her name? Margaret Anderson, the publisher of the Little, Little Review. And uh, the woman, what's her name? I'm blanking on names. Sylvia Beach, who uh, she, she had this bookstore, uh, Shakespeare and Company, and she published the first... Uh, actually collected edition of the book. And also, of course, Nora Barnacle, Joyce's uh, wife. It's um, all these people helped him and it wouldn't have been possible. Plus, Joyce was having all these eye problems and health issues. It was just, they were moving around. Like he started the book, um, I think he started in Trieste and eventually they finished it in Paris. All these hassles and the obscenity trials, all these obstacles. This was this book paved the way for other uh, books that would be obscene, quote unquote, and have trials and issues such as Lady Chatterley's Lover, uh, Henry Miller's Tropic of Cancer, Naked Lunch. We can thank Ulysses for uh, dropping, you know, all this uh, bad words into the book. Oh, there's a there's a blue there's a bird outside I'm watching. So consider um, the struggles of an artist like Joyce and the struggles of an artist like myself making these videos. The difficulties I have to bring them to you. How can you help? That's a great question. I mentioned a book earlier that I wrote. I have a few others such as Beyond Bitcoin. Is it here? And uh, Tarot for Beginners. Is it right here? And you can read them. You can buy them. There's in print books, digital books, audio books. I didn't read the audio book myself because I don't like reading, but they're out there on audio sources where you can listen to them. Oh man, my notebook fell. Other ways you can help. If you're not watching this on YouTube, go to youtube.com and here's the, here's my URL. You can go to my channel, subscribe, and like this video and every video that I've ever posted, ever. I also have a Twitter where I twit, tweet, twat. Every day I'm posting thoughts. Join my legion of followers. I also have a Patreon where you can give me money. Do it. And there's all kinds of people giving me money. You too can give me money. I think I've said enough, so... Without further ado, let's go and read a book.